Hey everybody, it's Peter, and I'm super excited about this vehicle right here because this is the Hyundai Santa Fe Plug-in Hybrid Electric Vehicle, PHEV. And not only is the powertrain interesting and cool, which I am gonna tell you about, this car has some of the best features in its class without doubt, and I'm gonna show you those things. And the reason I'm gonna show you those things is because I used to run a YouTube channel with millions of views that talked about this car and a whole bunch of others. I used to be an expert on these cars and I think I can show you a whole bunch of things that the other videos aren't showing you. So that's what I'm gonna do. But I'm filming here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals here in Fredericton, New Brunswick. And if you're looking for this car, there's not a three month, six month, one year wait for this car. You can buy it today. So again, if you're interested in anything any kind of vehicle really, but whether it's a PHEV, an electric vehicle, or just a regular crossover of any kind, make sure you stop by Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals in Fredericton, New Brunswick. And if you have questions about this vehicle in particular, make sure you subscribe and let me know in the comments what you wanna know about this vehicle because I have full access to their complete line of vehicles and I can talk more about this vehicle, I can compare it to other vehicles, we can have a whole conversation, and we kind of build a, build a video database of information about this vehicle so that you have all the information you need. All right, let's get going with this review. All right, so before you tune out, I do have to cover what a PHEV plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, and many of you who are watching this review already know, but in case you don't, I wanna talk about it, and even if you know what they are, stay tuned for about 30 more seconds because I'm gonna tell you a really cool difference with this one. Plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, a hybrid electric vehicle or a hybrid vehicle always mixes gas and electric and it's capable of running short spurts on pure electric and it's also capable of running on gas with that electric motor and it's going to save you fuel. Once you get a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, PHEV, you still have that full hybrid functionality. Anytime it's running it can run as a hybrid vehicle but by plugging it into the wall you get pure electric power and that gives you pure electric range, real world range. This one has about 50 kilometers of range. Now I hear people telling me oh that's not enough for my daily drive or that's not enough for this and that. We'll get to that in one second but that 50 kilometers of pure electric range allows you if you are like me I have a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle that has about 35 kilometers to 40 kilometers of electric range and I've had tanks of gas where I've driven 2,000 kilometers plus 2,700 kilometers one time of all on a single tank. So you can really stretch out the electric vehicle use on this, but even if you can't, if the first 50 kilometers that you did was pure electric, you would be saving money on fuel. Now, one of the downsides with a PHEV is a lot of other manufacturers take the standard engine that they have in that vehicle and then they, uh, they add the hybrid components to it and that vehicle becomes significantly heavier and you don't actually save any fuel when you run out of electric range. But that's not the case here. This has a totally different engine, a 1.6 liter turbo engine instead of the 2.5 liter or 2.5 turbo that is in the other models. So you already have a slightly more efficient engine. So when you add the extra weight of the components, you're kind of, you actually get better mileage and weight wise, you're not so bad. This model has a lot of the features of the very top end model and it's within 150 ish or so pounds of the actual top of the line vehicle, but you're gaining all that efficiency. So that's where you can gain efficiency even beyond running out of electric range. And that's what one of the reasons that makes the Hyundai unique. So again, that turbo engine combined with that, or 1.6 turbo engine combined with that electric motor really changes things. Now, one change in here is this does not have an eight speed transmission. It actually only has a six speed transmission. And that's because transmission works with torque. And when you have an electric motor, you've got torque, so you actually need less gears to get the efficiency. And that's one of the cool things about this. All right, we're gonna look at some practicality. We're gonna go trunk, rear seat space, and then driver's seat. And that's where I'm gonna start showing you some technology. So practicality matters because some PHEVs kind of lose some space uh, in their trunk area. So we're gonna show you what you've got here. And we'll keep moving through because there's a lot of luxury. And again, a lot of features other videos aren't showing you. That's what I'm gonna show you right now. All right, so we're gonna go look at the tailgate and I've got the key in my hand here. So you can see here's what the key looks like. Lock, unlock, it's got a hold down button for the tailgate. Now you can open the tailgate a lot of ways. I can hold this down, I can touch the back, but there's a secret way to hold the tailgate and it doesn't involve swiping your leg underneath there. And what I'm gonna do is leave the keys just here on my tripod for a second here and come right back to them. If I don't have the keys on me, I could approach this, I could touch this, I could, you know, in some cars you swipe the tailgate, but imagine holding your luggage and swiping your foot underneath the tailgate here. It just doesn't make sense to swipe your foot underneath that tailgate to open it because you're holding stuff. So what Hyundai does is pretty cool. It's called a smart tailgate. And what I'll do 
is I'll take these keys right here, I'm gonna throw them in my pocket, and as I approach the vehicle, because it's a proximity key, it knows that you're closed. That's why the handles work. So it knows that I'm closed. It's going to be beeping about five times in three seconds, and then the entire tailgate opens, and I never touched it, I never swiped my feet there. That is called the smart tailgate feature, and it's really cool because you can be holding your stuff, as long as the key's in your pocket, as you stand close, it'll beep about five times in three seconds, and uh, then it will open itself without having to touch it. So that's one cool feature. Underneath here, you have some uh, lack of storage space because of that hybrid component system. But underneath here, you still have all kinds of storage space, and that's pretty cool because this is not available as a seven passenger model. The Kia version is, the Hyundai version is not, which means you have tons of underfloor storage, but you still have a nice big floor here, 60-40 split. So let's zoom you in a little closer and show you the trunk. So if you're looking at the PHEV, the really, the only tell that this is a PHEV is a little bit of venting in here. So there's your little secret, you can impress your salespeople, you can tell it's a PHEV just by looking inside the trunk. Of course, there's badging on the back. But then you have two buttons over here which fold the seats down, which is good because these are a long ways forward, they're hard to reach. You also have a 12 volt port. If you want a uh, cargo cover, you can get that for this model as well. It's all built into the plastic there. And again, there's that underfloor storage. It's really deep in here. You could stick like an entire one of my kids' bags for the entire week of camping underneath there uh, in each spot there. There's three different spots. So a lot of storage in here, even though it's carrying an extra battery pack, which is really, really helpful. So when you get an eco vehicle, sometimes they do strange things with styling. And I think I like, or I do like what Hyundai does here. I think that this is gonna matter to a lot of people. They still have 19 inch rims on here. So you have good looking large wheels, not the skinny little tiny ones or the smaller rimmed wheels that they used to do on all these eco vehicles. So you have a normal looking vehicle. You also have a couple features that I like. Along the top here, we talked about trunk space. You have this big long rail that is a roof rail. They used to take roof rails off of eco vehicles because, oh, we all wanted efficiency. Well, the reality is we want efficiency, but we don't want to have to give up the practicality that we're used to. And if you throw your bikes up here or your canoe or your ski box or whatever you want, these rails are there. They're aerodynamic, but you could put cross rails across there and have your cargo securely attached up there so it's a regular SUV. The other thing that's nice is a taller vehicle, when you get in and out of a taller vehicle, oops, I had the door lock still, <laughs> unlock that. Let's see if we can get them both open, there we go. When you have a taller vehicle and you're getting out of that taller vehicle, sometimes your leg, your pant leg, can rub along the edge of the vehicle. And this one's pretty cool because the doors wrap all the way around, which means as I get out of that vehicle, I don't have the back of my pant leg dirty because they've thought of that. Hyundai has so many little details that they think about in this vehicle that make it really good. Let's check out the back seat because a lot of time back seats are pretty sparse. This vehicle is excellent, so I wanna show you some features in here. So I'm a reviewer that finds back seats to be really important. And one of the things I look for is big wide opening doors that have a lot of space. And you can see here it is a nice wide opening door and they have a lot of good things going on here. So one of the little things that they have going on here is just like in some of the higher end vehicles or in some minivans, they have an extra shade up here, which you can put up like that. Now the camera corrects for the light there, but you can see this is clear and that is shaded. So this does two things. One, it shades your kids in the back or whoever's in the back, but two, if you have valuables in the back, you have an extra layer of security for when you're looking into the vehicle. Now these windows are already tinted like on most SUVs, but you can see even with the camera up here, well, the camera again corrects again, it is very difficult to see anything inside, especially when it's not light like this silver, uh, it's very difficult to see inside. So that's a pretty cool feature for both passengers when they're in here and passengers when they are, um, when they are, uh, or when you have cargo in here. All right, taking a look at the door, you've got nice little details here. You've got nice plastics along here. Everything is soft touch there. You've got some cool little detailing in the speaker grill there, water bottle holder. This is all really good stuff. And then you come over here. You've got some ability to adjust these seats. And again, look at the seats here. They come out a little bit further to give your legs a little bit more um, support. And then you have a pocket on the driver's side, which is so rare these days. They should still do this in every car. They also have a pocket on the passenger side. You have vents, not just here, but also underneath the seats. You have USB ports down there as well, one for each of the outboard passengers. Cup holders in the armrest. There's a lot going on. Of course, the seats recline. That's uh, pretty typical stuff. And then you've got some nice patterning in here too. So they look like higher end seats uh, because they are. Now let's jump in for a second and we'll show you what it looks like with me inside. All right, so there's a lot of good things back here, but one of my favorites is right there. This is a panoramic roof here, and it is a huge glass panel behind another huge glass panel that makes back here just a really cool space to be. You can see you've got good visibility out here, 
but having that is pretty cool as well. And even though I'm not underneath it, I have great headroom. If I am underneath it, I've got immense headroom there. And if you don't want that, if you want to have a little bit more shelter from the bright light, it is very tinted, so you don't really have to worry about, you know, getting a sunburn or anything like that. But if you want it closed off, there is a panel back here that is electrically closable uh, from the front for the seats. And once you close that, you wouldn't even know that there's a sunroof there. Now, coming back here, you can see I've got pretty good support on my legs here. They come out there and, uh, you know, very comfortable seats. And of course, they do recline. So I'm going to bring them right forward. This is as far forward as they go, which is 90 degrees. I don't know if you can tell, but I am extremely uncomfortable in this position. The reason they go square like that is if you had a box in the back, you could put a box on the floor and it's 90 degrees up to the back of the seat. But what we're going to do is go fully the other way. And I'm basically reclined and almost, I wouldn't say lying down, but I could easily have a nice road trip here. And again, there's lots of headroom here, so you don't have to like duck your head to go buy anything. So whether you want to get comfortable or have cargo space, you've got space back here. You've got all the features, including the vents, the side thing, like just everything you could want in a backseat is here. It's a perfect vehicle for a long road trip. And again, sometimes people think of PHEVs as not a road trip worthy vehicle, but I think of an SUV as a vehicle you want to use as your road trip vehicle, but when you use it as your around town vehicle, it's going to get that efficiency. So let's move to the front and talk about some of the features out there now. So jumping in the driver's seat here, before we jump in, there's a couple things I want to show you. First of all, as we pump down here or sort of look down here, you can see the door wrapped around there. Same thing here. You can see the dirt marks along the edge of the seal there, but it's all clean up there. So if you do get out of this vehicle and uh, you rub your pant leg against the side of it, it's not going to be an issue. Now, these are the best seats in a Hyundai vehicle and among the best seats in the class not just because of how they are sort of static, but how they are for everyone. So first of all, powered seat, that's typical. Bottom, top, you can move them all sorts of, all sorts of different directions. But you have a four-way lumbar. A lot of lumbar is only in and out. This, you can move the lumbar up and down. And then you have this feature here. Look at right there. That can be tucked in. If you are a shorter person that doesn't need a super long seat, you can tuck that in. Most seats are designed just like that. If you're a taller person, you actually lose support. And on a road trip, that can be an issue. So what you do here is you put it out. Now, it doesn't look like a whole lot on video, but it really makes a difference to a tall person to have that really extended seat out. And they are fantastic seats. They're also memory seats. So you do have memory seats here. This plug-in hybrid version doesn't just give you you know, the extra plug-in hybrid stuff, it gives you a lot of features. So we're going to talk about those features coming in here. First of all, let's talk about one uh, feature right here. This car has what's called lane keeping assist, which is right here. If it sees lane markers, which it can do, it can help keep you within those lane markers, but it also has a more advanced feature. Let's see if we can move across here. This one is the more advanced feature, which is lane follow assist. And I want to talk to you about that right now. So I owned a Hyundai and I drove one from Ontario to New Brunswick and I didn't really hit the gas or brake almost at all and I barely had to steer at all. Now that's not how Hyundai is going to advertise this car, but the reality is that second steering wheel button that's on the steering wheel, it sees the lane markers in front of you and it physically steers the car and keep it, can keep it centered. It works best on highways, but it can work on a whole bunch of different roads. But if you do a major road trip, as long as you keep a little bit of weight, oops, let me go this way here. As long as you keep a little bit of weight on the uh, steering wheel, in other words, if you keep your hands on there. Now, I'll tell you honestly, you can take it off for quite a long time. You shouldn't, and it'll warn you if you do. But as long as you keep a little bit of weight on the steering wheel or just your hand sort of on the steering wheel like you normally would, the car keeps itself centered in the lane or it's capable of doing that. And in my case, it did. Combine that with smart cruise control, which is the cruise control that can not only be set to a certain speed, but can also see the vehicles in front of you and react to where, the, where they're positioned. On a vehicle like mine that had the same features like this, I actually had a Santa Cruz. I did that road trip from Ontario to New Brunswick, which is a 14 hour trip or so. And I barely hit the gas or the brake and I, barely steered at all. It basically kind of drove itself out here. Now it's not designed as self-driving features, but it makes a road trip amazing. And again, that's what's pretty cool about this car. It's not just an around town car. Let's take a look back here at a few other features that I really like. 
So the first thing you're gonna notice is great display screens in this vehicle. So you've got the display screen here, you've got a display screen over here. This one is about 10 and a quarter inch uh, display screen here. So it's a fairly uh, wide diagonal screen. And this one's even bigger. It's about 12.3 inch display. And there's all kinds of different things you can do. You can change the um, drive mode, which changes the uh, way this looks. Now this is a PHEV. It has electric range, but I'm gonna show you in a second that this one's not been plugged in. I'm actually getting to this vehicle before it's even ready for sale. To get it to you. Uh, so we're showing you a few things before we even charge it. Uh, that's why the engine's running right now. But in here you have, this is your all-wheel drive bar graph. So you can see your all-wheel drive in action. They've got a great all-wheel drive system here, so we can talk about that in a future video if you'd like. Uh, in this vehicle, you're gonna find, or as we go along right here, sort of an animation there. You can see it's been getting 3.9 liters per 100 kilometers. That's pretty good stuff. 9.1 since refueling. Again, we've been idling this car a little bit here. Uh, and then you have your range, 664 kilometers of gasoline and no electric range. Again, it can get about 50 kilometers of electric range. You'll see that they actually tweak just a hair higher sometimes. Um, but that 50 kilometers of electric range, if we plugged it in, would be displayed right there. So you would know exactly what you have. And then overall, your range would be down there, 664. So again, if it had electric range, it would be added to that. What's cool about this is if you drive less, less than 50 kilometers and you go back home, uh, you can charge it up again and drive an electric again and again and again. In the winter, you're going to run the gasoline engine. The gasoline engine needs to take, to take care of itself. So you're gonna run as a hybrid vehicle, which still gets you better mileage than the regular gasoline version. Um, because it's gonna, it will still, it's capable of running electric, but you're gonna find with the heater use and other things that you're gonna find that it runs as basically a hybrid vehicle in the winter, but three seasons of the year here in Canada, it's gonna work. Now, as we notice the steering wheel here, you've got paddle shifters here. Again, it is a six speed transmission. Now, why do you have paddle shifters? It's not really a super sporty vehicle. Well, the reason is, you have this nice little cluster of information and everything down here. So normally the vehicle has it here and it's hard to reach. On a Hyundai, on the Santa Fe, they move everything closer to you here. So you've got your automatic climate control right there. Automatic climate control is really important on a hybrid vehicle because fan speed and other things can change. So we can turn that on and just sort of let that happen. Driver only on a PHEV like this can keep the gasoline engine from starting if you just run a little bit of heat to the driver as opposed to everyone else. It's just a kind of a tweak that is kind of fancy. It's not something that's gonna make a huge difference, but you have those modes there. Temperature here, you get driver and passenger temperatures so they can control everything. Uh, obviously they can be synced together so you can control all of that here. That's easy reach. And then you have this here. So, some people don't like this, this gear shift thing. I find you get used to it and it does give you a cleaner, uh, nicer uh, look here. You can switch between EV and hybrid mode. One of the key pieces to a plug-in hybrid is if you want to use the electric range when you leave your house, that's the way it's defaulted. But if you want to set it up for a hybrid, um, and let's say you want to save that electric range for maybe when you're heading downtown and driving all downtown, uh, you can save the electric range for later, which is pretty cool as well. Then you have a lot of drive modes here, a smart mode, a sport mode, an eco mode, a snow mode, a mud mode, and a sand mode. Now, again, this is not optimized like a Jeep Wrangler for some of these off-road modes, but it changes your shift points. It changes the traction control settings. It changes the whole bunch of settings in the even the all-wheel drive system on how these things work. Eco mode is very popular on a car like this. Um, smart mode is pretty cool too because it, smart mode will default you into an eco mode, but if you really get into the throttle, it'll move it into that sport mode. Keep in mind, you've got a couple things going for you when you drive this vehicle uh, athletically, shall we say. A turbo engine, the 1.6 liter turbo engine, makes all of its torque or much of its torque down low in the rev range, and you've got electric motors. So you've got very good, fairly instant torque in this vehicle, low in the rev range. This one here, if I keep it out of the sport mode, is an tachometer. You can change the dash, but there's your tachometer, so you can see that. If you have it over here, that's an eco gauge. And if we zoom in a little bit further, you can see you can see when the vehicle is charging or running economically, or if you're really using the power there. So that can change that gauge there, uh, depending on what you wanna do. So again, keep coming down here. There's a pretty cool feature. We're gonna go fully wide angle now for a second here. So again, the reason you have paddle shifters is because you don't have the ability to tip your gear shift over here and move it over uh, from there. So the engine was running for a second there. Even though we're out of range, the engine turned off because it's always a hybrid. You do have an extra cup holder and a USB port right here. And there's a little indicator there for wireless charging. But if you haven't noticed where the wireless charging is, it's really smart here. It's down here. You can pull that piece out to clean it, but it's against the side. So you drop your phone in in that slot right there holds it in place and that's really handy. There's also a little button here that pops open the armrest. Let's talk about the seats for a second though, really quickly. 
Not only are there heated seats, rump roasters as I like to call them, there's also ventilated seats. And the ventilated seats work very well in Hyundai products. They uh, do a good job of venting through so you get instantly cooled. I can already sort of feel it coming through. Um, and these uh, black leather seats become very comfortable so you don't sweat in them. Really nice interior. Let's flip the camera around one more time. So we showed this view in the past as I was talking earlier, but one thing we probably didn't show is the sunroof. The sunroof does come up over the driver's head. Sometimes they sort of start back here, so you do have the benefit of it. Now I will say that this huge panel doesn't open all the way. It opens to about here or so, but it still gives you a ton of air in the front seat. Uh, so you have this big wide opening sunroof that's very big. You've also got a couple other features here. On the mirror here, there are buttons that as your home link button. So those will help you to open your garage door, which is super convenient. A lot of time Hyundai got rid of that uh, for a short time when they they were doing their Blue Link system. So they changed their Blue Link system so that it is now, Blue Link is an app that can help control your car. That is now up here. So you can have an app that helps see various things like state of charge on this type of car. There's lots of features in there. And then you also have your sunroof uh, opening and everything else and that panel. Actually, let's just shut that panel for you right now. So you can see that when that panel is closed, you just don't see the sunroof at all. You wouldn't even know it's there. You wouldn't look up in this vehicle and it is again fully sealing out. So in the winter, it gives you a little extra warmth. In the summer, it can take some sun away. I like it having it open and I can easily open just the panel or the entire sunroof. Overall, we talked about the seat adjustment, but I can tell you they're very comfortable. Visibility is also very good in this car. Safety is one of the key points. Let's just show you the screen uh, before we jump outside once, one more time. So this is the 10 and a quarter inch screen in the center of the dash. And one of the things that's pretty cool about it is you can kind of tell on Kia and Hyundai products whether you have wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto or wireless. If it says connect the cord, it is wired. But because this says press the widget, it is wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. So you can put that phone on the wireless charger and you have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay wirelessly here, which means you can pull up your Google Maps, your Apple Maps, some of the best, most up-to-date maps in the world can be pulled right up in there. So uh, really nice feature in here. You've got a PHEV screen as well, uh, which if you want to see how this thing's working, again, you've always got some level of charge. So even though it said zero kilometers of range over here, um, because it never becomes not a hybrid, it never has the lack of electric motor for power or anything else, you've always got some charge in here to make it work as a hybrid vehicle. That's also really good for battery longevity. So they do a really good job with some of this stuff in here. If you click on the radio here, we'll uh, jump into that. You can see we have HD radio, we have AM, FM and Sirius XM as well. So all really cool stuff in here. We'll go back out here. Let's see if we can go to all menus. You've got a lot of stuff in here. Again, the phone projection, that kind of thing. You can even leave yourself a voice memo here if you want to. Although if you have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, I would just use uh, those features instead. Quiet mode is kind of a cool one too. It can turn off the rear speakers and set the front vo volume to a lower volume, like seven. Uh, so if you have people in the back that are listening to their own music on their earphones, they can do that. Or if they just have kids sleeping in the back, you can kind of turn off their music, uh, which is kind of a nice feature, valet mode all kinds of features in here a lot of great technology let's jump outside so we're going to talk about who this car is for but again a reminder i'm kind of an expert on this vehicle and i left a whole lot of stuff out of this video so if you want to know more about it make sure you subscribe and let me know in the comments section but now let's talk about who this car is for so what i love about what they've done here is they've put in a number of high value features things like the ventilated seats instead of just the heated seats things like the uh uh lane follow assist instead of just the lane keeping assist. So the more advanced following of the lane system, the, uh, the blue link system, the extra panoramic sunroof, you have all those high value features, which help offset the a little bit extra cost of buying a PHEV, which makes this a really good value. You're getting really a luxury vehicle. Now there are some luxury fe features left out of this that you can get in the ultimate calligraphy version of the Santa Fe. But when you pay for this PHEV system, you're not purely paying for that big battery that's sitting there and some of the electric components like the electric motor in there. You're also getting a very well equipped vehicle. And what that means is when we talk about who this vehicle is for, if you just want a really nice Santa Fe that's quiet, that drives well, that has great safety features, which we didn't even really touch on in this, vehicle, in this video, this is a very good option. Where it makes a difference is if you do a lot of in-town driving you're going to save fuel, especially with this, with that 50 kilometer range. Now, if you do more than 50 kilometers, that doesn't matter. You can still do your first 50 kilometers or so of electric range and then use some fuel. You're still gonna save a whole lot of fuel. But if you do 
trips that are 50 kilometers or less, whether they're highway speed or not, because this is even at highway speed, it can be fully electric. If you do that kind of driving, you'll find that a PHEV can really save you money. And it's weird to look at it on the fuel mileage specs because like I said, driving this thing straight across the country without charging it, it's gonna get hybrid-ish mileage, uh, but not quite as good as a pure hybrid because it has a few extra weighty components in there. But if you look at how you drive, lots of short trips, lots of around town, with the occasional great road trip, that's why this vehicle is great. Because the short trips, it's gonna save you a ton of fuel. On the longer trips, it still saves you a little bit of fuel, but it has all the features you need for a long road trip. And that's why PHEVs are really for everyone. Because what you need to know about this vehicle that I haven't covered yet, is you just get in and drive. You don't have to know how to do things. Knowing a few of the settings, you can eke out a little bit extra efficiency here and there. But at the end of the day, there's no learning curve. You're never stuck having to go to a charge station. You can go to a charge station if you want to and charge up, but you can go to a gas station and drive across the country with no extra planning, just like you can in your gas car. This is a really good alternative efficient vehicle for a lot of people. You can sit there and look at a Prius on your short daily commutes, bringing your kids to school, bring them around town, look at a Prius and go, man, look at that gas guzzler, because this thing can use no fuel on most people's everyday driving. I own a PHEV, mine happens to be a Jeep Wrangler 4xE. If you wanna compare this to something like a Jeep Wrangler 4xE, we sell those here. If you wanna compare it to a full electric car like a Tesla, we have that here as well. If you wanna compare it to just a regular everyday Hyundai, Honda, Mazda, Toyota, whatever it is, all of those are here. And that's one of the big benefits of Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals. So if you're looking for a vehicle, make sure you swing by there. And if you wanna know more about this vehicle, make sure you subscribe and we'll talk to you in the next one. Thanks for watching.